this one, we have that one, we have these in every color. Did you just run out of this? Then you should stock up on another. Add a few more to your cart, cause it's buy one, get one free. Shop small biz and you'll be happy. Yes, it's retail therapy. I have lost a lot of things over the first 50 years of my life. I've lost my patience, I've lost my keys, I've lost loved ones. But the one thing I wasn't prepared to lose was my hair. It just happened. And I consider myself a pretty analytical person who's good at problem solving. So why is it that I ended up with this giant pile of expensive, unusable wigs that did nothing but frustrate me and leave me in tears? Well, it took me a while to think about that and to try to narrow down the reasons, but I think I have. And in this video, I am going to share with you some of the things I think you need to keep in mind or avoid in the early stages of your wig journey. If you think this is something that might be helpful to you, please stay with me and I will be right back. Tip number one, acknowledge that hair loss is an emotional experience. When my hair fell out, I experienced such a sense of loss in terms of control, in terms of normalcy, in terms of my health, and a feeling feminine. And because of that, I was constantly in a state of uneasiness. When I first discovered wigs, I had such a sense of relief and I felt like I was going to fill this big old hole. I was going to fix things quickly. I was emotionally vulnerable, I suppose, and I had this irrational fear that if I didn't buy things right away, I was going to miss something that I needed. And so my number one tip for you is do not allow emotion to govern your wig purchases. Tip number two is to be realistic about what a wig can do for you. Do not expect a miracle. Yes, a wig can do amazing things for your self-confidence, can really enable you to feel more like yourself again and to hold your head high, but do not expect a miracle. I kind of liken this to the time that I bought one of those hold you in dresses where the model online looked absolutely beautiful. Well, I got that thing and I struggled to get myself into it and my muffin top was still on display for the whole world to see. That dress could only do so much and a wig can also only do so much. You've got to be realistic about it. Otherwise, you're gonna set yourself up for a lot of disappointment. Those wig retailers and manufacturers do a great job at selling their products. That's what they're supposed to do. And your job is to make sure that you remember that you are just as wonderful as you always were, with or without hair. So do not allow emotions to govern your purchases and have realistic expectations. Number three. And this tip is specific to purchasing from online retailers. Do not jump on purchasing a wig simply because it is 30% off today. Trust me, that same wig will be 30% off tomorrow at another retailer or at that same retailer that same time next week. Almost every manufacturer allows its wigs to go on sale at approximately 30% off weekly. The exceptions to that are usually Henry Margu and I believe Tony of Beverly. So do not just jump on it because you think, holy cow, there's a 30% off sale. I better get this now. I cannot tell you how many times I did that. I think it's a fear that you are missing out on the deal of the century. You will learn this throughout your journey that there are a number of manufacturers. There are also a number of retailers and those sales are very consistent. Number four, watch reviews online for a wig you are interested in, and then watch some more reviews. I cannot state enough how important 
education is key to a successful wig journey. One of the things that I will tell you is that you are not going to get a very good idea from a retailer's website or a manufacturer's website regarding color, and the stock photos are generally not very helpful. One other resource that I want to give you that I think is absolutely essential to your journey as a new wig wearer is to check out Denise Sheets. I actually have a direct link for Denise's new wig wearer series. I've gotten permission from Denise to mention this in my video. Thank you, Denise, and to put her link in here. But I have yet to come across a video series that is more helpful in terms of covering the entire gamut of what you need to know as a new wig wearer. Again, I really, really encourage you to check out that series. I think it is going to save you an amazing amount of time and frustration and answer a lot of those questions that otherwise you would be spending an incredible amount of time attempting to do Google searches and research on your own. So please make sure that you are checking out that link, which I am putting in the description box of this video. Denise Sheets is also known as Hey Wig Sister, and that's how you can find her on Facebook and Instagram. My number five tip is to measure your head circumference, and that is the dimension that is going around your head. The reason I say that is it is really easy to completely write off a wig that might be perfect for you simply because it is ill-fitting. For instance, let's say you order a wig and it is just gapping something terrible in the back and you are looking like a Neanderthal. Well, had you taken your measurements and come to find out that you actually have a petite circumference and had you ordered that style in a petite in a petite cap size, maybe it would have fit you perfectly and you would have found the wig that you were looking for. So that can really help you out and um, help you make better choices if you at least know what your circumference measurement is. Tip number six is to be aware of the return policies of a retailer. Some retailers absolutely do not allow returns at all. Others have very expensive restocking fees um, where it makes it extremely prohibitive to even send back. The other side of this is that some retailers are very good about not charging any restocking fees and the only thing that you are really paying for is return shipping. But I want to let you know that as a wig community, I really believe that a consumer has a responsibility as well. I think it's really unfair when some people are kind of serial returners and that all they do is buy a wig return it, buy a wig return it, buy a wig return it. When that happens consistently, it really raises the cost for a retailer. And I think that there is a responsibility on the part of the consumer as well to also take those steps in terms of educating themselves. And so when they are making a purchase, it is in good faith. Um, but at the same time, you do want to be protected as a consumer. And if you do buy something and despite your best efforts, it's not for you, you want to have the ability or at least the option to return it and not have it cost you an arm and a leg. Tip number seven is to Beware of clearance wigs unless you are established in your wig journey. And the reason I say this is almost every online retailer has a policy that clearance wigs are final sale. And so when you get a clearance wig, you better be sure that this is the color and the style that you want because you're going to be stuck with it unless you are able to sell it on the secondary market, such as a Facebook marketplace or something like that. And in today's world, that is not a sure thing. I can't tell you how many wigs in that pile that I had on that bed I tried selling and they just didn't go. So you want to make sure that you know what you're, what you're doing. Also, some retailers are very conscientious about inspecting their returns before they turn around and sell them. Others are not. I can tell you that two retailers with whom I have had exceptional experience and have purchased lots of clearance products that are very, very well inspected with an actual checklist are name brand wigs and Wig Studio One. 
Both of those companies do an outstanding job on their clearance items, and they are honestly just about open box. I'm not saying those two retailers are exclusively the only retailers that do an impeccable job. I am simply saying those are two with whom I have had outstanding experiences, and those items are, are absolutely pristine and go through a remarkable inspection process. Tip number eight is remembering that a synthetic wig is going to have a relatively short lifespan. If you are wearing the same synthetic wig every single day, regardless as to if it is regular synthetic or heat-friendly fiber, it is going to get yucky, for lack of a better word, at some point in time, despite good care. And you need to ask yourself, how often am I going to wear this? Am I going to have this wig in a rotation? Am I willing to put in the additional time that a heat-friendly fiber requires? Those are the types of questions you need to ask yourself, and you need not have unrealistic expectations. Because synthetic wigs, while more cost effective in some respects than a human hair wig, for instance, are still not cheap. You are looking at $200, $300 for a quality synthetic wig, even when on sale. So you have to be realistic and cognizant of the fact that they do have a relatively shorter lifespan than their human hair counterparts. And so you need to ask yourself how you are going to wear your wigs and how you are going to care for them. That also is going to help you with the disappointment if you have one wig that you are wearing every single day and not caring for um, the way you need to, or perhaps you are caring for it properly, but simply remembering that these wigs are made out of fibers that have a good plastic component and are going to have a, a shelf life. They are going to expire at some point and they are not going to look so great. Tip number nine may seem a little counterintuitive when you are first starting out on a wig journey. Um, and that is to steer clear of the most inexpensive wig you can find with absolutely the most basic cap features. And the reason that I'm recommending this to you is that that's what I did at the beginning. And wigs that do not have a lace front, that do not have um, any additional features, tend to look a little more like wigs. They don't have to look like wigs for their entire lifespan, but they look like wigs at first, and unless you have experience and you know what you're doing with them, they tend to look wiggy. And if you have actual styles that may have some of the higher end features, such as a lace front, such as a mono part, they're going to have more of the look of natural hair. And particularly if you are going from a situation of hair loss or hair thinning, it is probably going to be an easier transition for you and less of a matter of frustration in terms of realism and having a natural look if you go with a wig that has a little more cost, but a little more in terms of the actual features of a wig. And that's just my preference. You probably will have um, other reviewers or other, other people who are giving advice regarding wigs who might say something different. But in my experience, I would have saved myself a lot of money if instead of buying 10 or 15 completely basic cap wigs that I ended up not wearing at all, putting that money into one or two wigs that actually had a lace front or had a monotop, I think I would have been far better off from a fiscal perspective and far happier from a frustration level perspective. And finally, tip number 10 is to join a community of wig sisters. If you are on Facebook, there are an absolute plethora of hair loss or wig sister support groups that you can join and have the opportunity to interact with other people who are in a situation um, just like you. There are women and men in these groups who are able to share experiences regarding um, trials and tribulations with alternative hair, as well as um, specific groups that are for people who are dealing with different types of 
um, medical intervention and different um, hair regrowth type of techniques. So there actually is a support group out there for everyone. My point with number 10 here is that you're not alone. This is an issue that affects hundreds of thousands, if not more people um, on a daily basis. And the beautiful thing about social media is that you have the opportunity to connect. Even if you're one of those people that kind of likes to just hang out in the background and take it all in, doesn't necessarily like to be somebody that posts all the time, you still will have the ability to have that feeling of connectedness and to um be part of a community and get some ideas. And I, I really think that is something that is imperative to feeling as though you're going to make it through this journey of alternative hair um, and come out virtually unscathed. So I really recommend that you join some sort of support group of, of other wig sisters or hair loss persons out there and that um, you, you go ahead and take advantage of other people's experiences. You know, I, I think it's really important. It can also save you money. Um, if I would have done my legwork previously, I don't think I would have had that big old pile of absolute trashy hair. So those are my top 10 tips to not go down the rabbit hole of compulsive wig buying at the beginning of your wig journey. And I hope that this video has been somewhat helpful to you. If it has, I would ask you to please hit that like and subscribe button. And I hope that you will join me next time on Spare Hair Love Affair. And remember, you don't owe anyone an explanation for why you choose to feel confident. So wear that wig and wear it proudly. See you next time. Bye.